everyone, just a few disclaimers to start things off here. Uh, first of all, this video is going to be a little different from most of the others I do because it'll be more of a structured discussion with a script rather than an off the top of my head story. Also, by saying the things I do in this video, it may sound like I plan on going out on the streets and endangering myself to fight crime or, you know, getting magnetic implants in some dude's garage. Note that any time I talk about myself in reference to such activities, it is purely hypothetical. If at any time a real life superhero pops up in the area calling his 5 foot 8 self Thunderbird or Wild Charge or something stupid like that, it is a complete coincidence and likely has nothing to do with me. So don't think that he is me. It may also sound like I'm promoting such behavior, but no, really don't do it, it's dangerous. Real life superheroes. Sounds like four words, but actually only two. Real life superheroes are what you would think they are for the most part. They run around in their masks and suits with their crazy names and protect the innocent. However, there are a few differences from the heroes in the comics, movies, and television shows we all love. The biggest one is the superpowers. No known real life superhero actually has any superpowers for obvious reasons. How are they able to fight as superheroes if they don't have superpowers? Because it's the powers that allow for the righteous do-gooders of our media to combat villains. A continuity between the vast majority of active real-life superheroes is that they have studied and practiced at least some form of martial arts and self-defense. Most of these techniques are developed with defense in mind, so they work very well on any sap who dare throw a punch. Other than that, there is one difference between the superheroes of our comic books and the real-life superheroes in that real-life superheroes tend to stick to community outreach as their main duty. You definitely won't find any of them intervening in a bank robbery, but most of them work alongside humanitarian organizations to help those in need. Now that isn't to say that they don't fight crime. Although most of them focus on community outreach, lots of them are most certainly ready and willing to get physical if they're put into that sort of situation. Just not the, I'm putting myself into mortal danger kind. It's hard to karate chop bullets. Mostly, they just put themselves into high tension situations to prevent violence. For example, if a hero was to come across two drunk men outside of a bar that were yelling and threatening each other, the hero could get in between them and cool them off. If things went south, they could easily defend themselves, but are mostly there just to stop people from getting hurt, and would rather avoid violence. Of course, this could not be achieved with martial arts alone. Lots of them have special equipment like stab-proof armor or stun guns. While some work with the police, many do not. This can get them into trouble sometimes and are often labeled vigilantes. There are a lot of these guys, so obviously I can't talk about all of them. But a few examples include Phoenix Jones, Life, Soundwave and Jetstorm, Night Vigil, The Black Rat, Lionheart, and the Black Widow, among many others. Phoenix Joan, likely the most popular of all the real-life superheroes out there. Alter Ego, being Benjamin Fodor, has a background in mixed martial arts and is signed to World Series Fighting. When heroing, he wears stab-proof plating and a bulletproof vest, and he equips himself with pepper spray, a stun baton, handcuffs, and a first aid kit. He mainly defuses hot situations and uses violence as a last resort. He has stopped multiple vehicle jackings, fights, and even chased down a suspect in a stabbing for the police. He even has his own supervillain, called Rex Velvet, who speaks against his vigilantism but I'm pretty sure he does it just to make Phoenix look better. He was also one of the original members of the Rain City Superhero Movement, a real-life superhero league in Seattle. Hey, it's Miller, here to save the day like the superhero I am. Apparently, according to this headline and a podcast that Phoenix Jones did, he is thinking about retiring his superhero activities. Life. Life may not have the most super name or super costume, but he does his job as a superhero. He doesn't have any special training or equipment, so his focus is on helping the homeless. He goes around town with a backpack full of supplies and hands them out to the needy as he finds them. Soundwave and Jetstorm. This duo shows that no matter how young or small you are, you can always make a difference. They use their voice and flashy costumes to inspire those around them and promote charities. 
They are members of the Skiffy Town League of Superheroes, the Black Rat. This Australian superhero is a personal favorite of mine. He has stopped multiple crimes throughout Sydney. He carries around what he calls the Rat Pack that has a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, emergency saw, as well as basic utilities like a flashlight and phone. Most notably and impressively is his incredible defense. On top of a deep knowledge in self-defense, he has made an armor that nullifies pretty much every physical attack, be it a bat to the nuts or a stab in the guts. Lionheart, a hero in Africa that teaches people to protect themselves against human trafficking, how to clean water, and generally, how to not die in Africa. The Black Widow, not to be confused with Black Widow from the Marvel Universe, he is very heavily influenced by Spider-Man. This young hero uses his acrobatics and baton to fight crime, though the biggest thing he defends is the self-confidence of the world. He preaches that being yourself is the best thing to be, and he's mostly just a chill dude. DIY evolution. So there's this thing going around right now called biohacking. Biohacking is the manipulation of ourselves as beings, as living things, to further evolve ourselves. Now that does sound a little weird, a little radical, so you can expect some of these dudes to be kind of nut jobs. A lot of them very much are. Um, however, I think they all bring a very good point into light, and that is, as complex beings, it is harder for us to biologically evolve in the natural way. So the way to further our evolution would be through our, our intellect and through advancements in technology. Grinding, unfortunate name I know, is one branch of biohacking that involves the physical change of our bodies with mechanics and robotics. Some examples include there's this guy who has he had like a tattoo and he used it as a marker to insert like this it looked like a big computer chip you know and it was like an internal thermal regulator um in his arm and it like told his phone the temperature of his internal body heat and if there was ever any amount of change in it it's just like on regular 30 second intervals this dude was definitely whack because he was like oh yes i'm gonna be immortal one day I'M NOT GONNA DIE! Uh, I've taken- and when he was done with the procedure, he's like, I'm one step closer to immortality! I will never die to sickness now, because I'll always know when I start to get sick. I want to live to be thousands of years old. I don't want to die. I don't understand why anybody would. Like I was saying, a lot of these guys are nut jobs. They're cool nut jobs, though. They're not like crazy bad people nut jobs. They're good people nut jobs who want to improve the human race but that could be said about a few people um, by far the most common example of grinding are the magnetic implants now these magnetic implants are some crazy cool stuff first let it be noted don't just put magnets in your body that's a terrible idea you'll get poisoning you'll get metal poisoning these magnets have to be coated in certain uh, other metals that are more bio-friendly as they're known in the grinding community. People people of this community are called grinders. Now these magnetic implants, you'll coat them in a bio-safe metal and you'll you, they're usually put in somewhere in your fingers. They say that the best place for them is your ring fingers, like the sides of your ring fingers. Once you put these magnets in there, your nerves and your nervous system will recognize it as a part of your body, as a part of your nervous system, right? And because magnets work via electrical waves, just as your nerves do, imagine experiencing a sense through another sense. So it's like a half a new sense. Of course, this doesn't happen instantly. It takes a long time people have said six months for your nervous system to come around to it. I just think that's incredible. It should also be noted, this is not their intention. However, I found a guy on YouTube 
who he was messing around with some cops one day. He had this he had these implants, uh, and he was just messing around with some cops one day, and they tased him, but it didn't affect him at all, because I don't know why, but I think it I think all of the electricity just like went to the implant rather than throughout his body. Yeah. Has no effect on me whatsoever. <laughs> I've got a superpower that some people say is made up. I don't feel temperature so much as I feel changes in temperature. On a cold, cold day, when it's freezing cold, if it's not been cold for a while, I freaking hate it. But after being outside for a couple hours, it's no problem, I could be naked. Same goes for being really hot. I can wear like 25 layers. I don't fully believe it myself, but I just kind of don't. There are also NFC chip implants. Anyone who has them mostly uses it as their credit card or perhaps their passport. I am a big fan of Nintendo and their line of the Amiibo. And the Amiibo works with NFC technology. Yes. Wouldn't it be just the biggest fanboy move of all time? To become an Amiibo. To become an Amiibo. What if I took the chip out of a me fighter amiibo that i had turned into my me and then implanted it into my cheek or my foot or something so or, that when you know just your just finger my finger somewhere whenever i was just playing smash bros with my with my dogs i could just bam nfc scan myself into the game i i would not promote violence right it's always a last resort in fact, my favorite part of my outfit is my stun hands. You're focusing a lot on the combative nature. Right. Well, let me tell you. I would mostly be doing community outreach. Mostly. No need to resort to violence here. No, except, well, no, because I wouldn't be fighting them. I'd just be, like, flaunting the fact that I have the ability to tase them. Threatening. That's threatening. Okay, yeah, no. I wouldn't... Unless I had to. You just want to taste people. No, I don't want to taste people. Okay, I, I want to make this very clear. This is purely hypothetical. I am so anti-violence, it's not even funny. Shut up. I'm very anti-violence. I'm so anti-violence. I know it doesn't... Uh, but, look. 